Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another time here. Welcome to another time in the opera room. Another opportunity to pray. Another privileged opportunity to pray. So good to have you here. So glad you came. Uh, so still back on what we're studying. We've been doing the study through the book of Proverbs when chapter mm -hmm. 6, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to jump straight away to Ephesians. We've been trying to take it from Ephesians. Uh, I'm going to jump into um, verse 20 of Ephesians <laughs> chapter 4. And it says, but you have not so lent Christ. Hmm. He's saying that he's saying that these are the things the Gentiles do. They do it because they lack knowledge. Their, their, their eyes and their heart is darkened. They have no more feeling or they, or they don't have any conscience towards say That's why they do it. And because you have been called out from that, you're not supposed to be like Gentiles. Right, what is mark, marking at the Gentiles must not be seen in you because you have been born again, you have been called out from amongst them. Right, he says, We have not learned what the Gentiles are doing of Christ, we have to be different, we have to be separate. Right, we, we cannot be like them. There's we are the called out ones, that's the word church. Church means called out, we have been called out from amongst everyone. Right, if we are called that, then there must be a differentiation in our life. Right, we have been called out to be different. It's like God talks about Israel, He says, I have chosen Israel to be a nation amongst nations. I have chosen Israel to show myself in Israel, to show myself in Israel. Israel is supposed to show me forth the same thing mm -hmm. about the church. The church is like Israel, God has called us out to show himself in and to us. We are hmm. here to witness the power, the person, and the presence of Christ. If we hmm. don't have these three things, we're useless. We are no better than the world. We are here to witness the power, the presence, the, 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 the power, the, the, the presence of, what was the third thing again? I <laughs> just ran through. But we're here to witness Christ. We're here to witness Christ. And we must, if we're witnessing Christ, you cannot be like the world. Again, in Antioch, they call them Christians because they saw Christ in them. It wasn't just a name they just call, they just call any name. Is they are like Christ. They are the, like the one that died. Again, the, the, the disciples were, were once held down, beaten, and all of that. And they somehow they noticed, ah, these people are like people that have spent time with Christ. The time they spent with Christ differentiated them. They were not they were not the same because they spent time with Christ. You know, so in verse 20 year of Ephesians 4, it says, we have not so learned of Christ. I mean that we're supposed to learn of Christ. Christ is supposed hmm. to make a differentiation in our life. We cannot remain the same after we have met Christ. Otherwise, our meeting hmm. him is, not, is in vain. Otherwise, hmm. we did not really meet him. Because if you meet Christ, you will not be the same. You hmm. know? A lot of people will come and say, hey, we are sinners saved by grace. Yes, we are, we were sinners. When we met grace, grace changed us. We did not remain mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. After Calvary, mm -hmm. you are no more a sinner. You are a saint. No, 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 no. Yeah. You are a saint after Calvary. Anybody that says you are a sinner after Calvary is trying to make excuse for their shortcoming. Mm -hmm. Of expectation is that when I meet Christ at the cross, I don't remain a sinner. Something changed. Something oh, must yeah. change in my life. I cannot be the same after I've met Christ. Okay. There must be a differentiation. There must be a Christ that I take. There must be mm, an aspect of Christ that I meet. That, 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 and what that, we are that, living that, on is will be that influences me. That is seen in my life. Yeah, people should see me and say, mm, this person has been with Christ. Been with Christ. This person has been touched by Christ. This mm -hmm. person has seen Christ. You know? If that is not seen in our life, we are not Christians. So. Mm. Are not there, <laughs> we are not yeah. Christians. So your church goers. <laughs> because the essence of being a Christian, the essence of being to Calvary is that Christ lives in mm -hmm. and through us. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible says that he died for us so that the life we live now will live unto him. Mm -hmm. Right? Awesome. And God will help, not unto ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I believe it says that I have been crucified with Christ. Yeah. The me is dead. Mm -hmm. It is Christ that lives by faith through me. 
Yeah. It is yeah, Christ that good. lays my faith through yeah. me. It is not my decision. It is not what I want. It is, oh, I like this. I don't like this. Oh, mm. this one feels good. We will subject all our thoughts, our minds, yes. our yes. likes. Absolutely. Likes right. that's, what a, that's what a Christian is. Anything other than that, you you had a is a is a carnal Christian, and there's no mm. place for a carnal Christian in heaven. Mm. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Going to heaven is not automatic. There's mm -hmm. no place for a carnal Christian in heaven. Mm. There's no place for flesh and blood in heaven. Amen. So looking at uh, Ephesians. Uh, chapter 4 verse verse 20 you know it's it's the fact that you know it's like when Jesus Christ was, was about leaving you know he breathed unto the disciples and said receive the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. the question is did they receive the Holy Ghost at that point in time or did they receive the Holy Ghost on Pentecost day mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you I know the significant, but I would know for sure they received the Holy Ghost on Pentecost Day. Indeed. Breath unto them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The way that the, the church is ordained, the church is ordained to be a separated one. John 14, mm -hmm. 17, 17 says, sanctify them by the truth. Your mm -hmm. word is truth. So God says, separate them. Jesus was praying to Jesus. He says, separate my people, separate this one, separate the church. By the truth, the truth is what's supposed to separate us, supposed to sanctify us. That's what Jesus is the truth. So Jesus is supposed to sanctify us. The word of God is the truth. It's supposed to sanctify us. Yeah. What back us out is word of God. It's yeah. not messing things or does not think. Oh, I think it's right. I think it's not right. Mm -hmm. Oh, the the way I feel. I think the Holy Ghost is telling me this. Oh, the Holy Ghost told me this in a dream. Mm -hmm. None of those mean anything. That was not what Jesus Christ says you separate the church by. Mm -hmm. He said, by the word, by the word, mm -hmm. by the word. Word of truth. The word of truth. Word that is already written. It Absolutely. Is, His word is canonized. That is settled. Absolutely. There's no new revelation that will go against the word no. of God. Mm -hmm. We can't say because uh, it's a new generation, so they see the word of God is obsolete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a, that's a trap of the enemy. That's mm -hmm. the way to hell. The word of God is settled in heaven. That is what makes us Christians. It's not the church building. It's not the name. It's not who our ancestors were. It's the word mm -hmm. of God. That is what separates us out to be God's own. That's what separates us out to be Christians. People like Christ. That's what separates us out. He, the, he, Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is the way. The way is the word of, is the way of the word. Oh. The truth is the word of God. The light is found in the word of God. It's not a religion. It's not an ordinary organization. Oh. It is one that is marked out by the word of God. And that word of God needs to be taught. First of all, that word of God is taught to every one of us by the Holy Ghost. But we are all at different levels of growth and therefore different levels of being able to receive from the Holy Ghost. Therefore, that's why the Bible, God calls people into ministries. It says he has called the sevenfold to prepare people for the work of the ministry. Right? We have different, at different levels of growth and intimacy with God. And we can learn from one another. We can learn from one another. We can learn from each other's experience. We can yeah. learn from each other's um, adventure in God. Yeah. But that adventure has to be defined by the word of God. It's not going to be a new yeah. knowledge. It's not going to be something that will go against God's word. Right? It has to be judged by the word of God. Right? But we can learn from one another. That's why God has called people to be apostles, to be prophets, to mm -hmm. be teachers, to be evangelists, to be pastors mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. right? To prepare us for the work of the ministry, to mature us, that we'll not be babes all the days of our life. We can mm -hmm. press into the higher things. We can press into the deeper things in God, you know, mm -hmm. by learning from one another, by showing each other the way, you know, because we can grow. 
there are levels in God. We can go from mm -hmm. this one level of faith to another, one yeah, level yeah, of yeah. glory to another. We can grow. And those that have gone ahead of us can help us come along also, right? That That is what God expects from, from, from mm -hmm. us. That is how we learn of him. That's how we become more like him on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. We come by works of righteousness. Absolutely. Or by His grace. Absolutely. His completeness in us is not by what we do mm -hmm. or what we desire to do. But His grace, eh? before we were, before we were yet sinners, He died for us. So He knew us from the beginning to our ending. So that's why we don't have a place to run away from. The Bible says, where will I run away from? Even if I go under the pit, it's there. If I go into the, 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 the clouds, it lives there. Mm -hmm. So there is no place we run away from this God. And there is no way we deny him. We can't mm -hmm. deny him. Because we were created through him. If not for him, we wouldn't have been alive. Yeah. So for him to have traded himself for us and brought himself just like us to die and to just for us to have understanding. So I pray the heart of our understanding will not be dark. Yeah. The, Lord, the Lord God who gave us a mandate to be a living soul will make us and there to function to function well. Amen. 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 to give us a hedge above others, and through that, many others will come to the organization of Jesus Christ. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great evening of today. Uh, hey, you too. You. God bless you. See you tomorrow, God willing. Bye. 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 B